Pastor Chooks Obina Ogoye. Pastor Chooks is the lead pastor of Resurrection Life Church in Johannesburg. He is a passionate teacher and preacher of the Word of God and has been blessed by God with the uncanny ability and gift to explain and unpack deep and complex spiritual truths in very easy to understand and apply formats. Pastor Chooks has been involved and active in marketplace ministries. He's an entrepreneur and business consultant with an avid passion for raising other entrepreneurs and business leaders. He has taught and facilitated many leadership and entrepreneurship courses and seminars. He is the host of broadcast programs on Facebook, YouTube, and several podcast channels. Living the life with Pastor Chooks, the amazing power of woman. Thank God it's Friday. Good evening. Welcome to episode 211 of our online masterclass, Understanding the Goodness of God. My name is Chuck Sugoyen. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the concept of waiting on God, the goodness of God and waiting. Uh, it's been a series titled, the, God, the Goodness of God Manifests When We Wait for Him. The Goodness of God Manifests When We Wait for Him. And, and we've been dealing with so many aspects of waiting on God and, you know, His, his kind and, and a good disposition towards us as we wait. So, tonight I want to look at the, you know, how to, the right way to wait and the wrong way to wait. I know I've mentioned it uh, in, the, in the course of this series. I want to go deep into it today. The right way to wait and the wrong way to wait. All right. Now, the truth is that, you know, um, I don't know about you, but, you know, I am, I am impatient. I, I don't like waiting. I don't like I don't like waiting. It's so frustrating to be waiting and you're thinking, you know, ah, this thing should have happened long time ago, you know, you know, why, why is the answer not coming now? Why, why do we have to, you know, why does it have to take this long? I, I don't know if anybody, anybody, you know, knows, knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. You know, how do you deal with uh, that anxiety, you know? You know, yesterday I talked about uh, how to get into a, a zone where your expectation, uh, even if it's waiting, it doesn't frustrate you, you know? Yes. Uh, and I dealt with that. And a very powerful message yesterday. Uh, if, you, if you missed it, you need to watch it, you know? You need to watch it. Uh, we saw Elijah um, utilize the principle. We saw Joshua utilize the principle. We dealt with all of that yesterday. However, there are times when we are not able to get into that zone where Elijah got into or where Joshua got into where they saw the answer and they knew that the answer had come. There are sometimes we have to deal um, you know, with that frustration and, and that. So what, what, how do we do it? Okay, so that's what I want to address today. Philippians, Philippians chapter 4. These teachings are so rich. Um, you, you, you need to listen to them over and over again because what we are talking about here is the, the experience of every single one of us. Like we have said in previous episodes, everybody who walks with God have to wait for him. That's why he is God and we are not. So we have to wait for him. We have to wait. Even when, you know, he looks like uh, he's wasting time or he's taking so long, he's, he actually is not taking so long. You know, because the Bible says that he makes all things beautiful in its time. He makes all things beautiful in his time. So the, 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 the definition of how long is, is, is right, you know. <laughs> God is the one who decides how long is right. And all, how, however long it is, is right by him. All right, look at this scripture in, Ephesians, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. He said, be anxious for nothing. Including when you're waiting. Don't allow anxiety to take over your heart. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the peace of God, 
The right way to wait on God is to wait in peace, to wait with patience, to wait with, with joy. It's, 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 that's the right way. So there's no point waiting and fretting, waiting and, and being frustrated, waiting and grumbling. Mm -mm. That's the wrong way to wait. The right way to wait is to wait with peace to wait with patience, to wait with joy. And how do you do that? You do that according to this scripture here. It says, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So you stay in the place of thanksgiving. You stay in the place of thanksgiving and you, you deliberately and intentionally stay in peace. Allow the joy of the Lord to fill your heart. You know, it's, it's something that you need to snap out. Why are you allowing the waiting period to be a torturous period? It's a state of mind. You can actually choose to trust the Lord. You can actually choose to trust the Lord and not worry. And not worry. And trust him that he knows the best time to bring the answer. He knows what is good for you. Listen, God is so big. God is so huge. God is so good. And he's so powerful that he's able to turn around, you know, your circumstance, your situation, that when he brings the answer, it will be better than you could have ever asked for. Yes, he makes it beautiful. He is able to make it beautiful. Did, did you get that? So you can learn to trust him. And say, God, I trust you. I don't know how this is working out. I don't know when it's going to work out. But I choose to trust you. And because I, ch I, I, cho I choose to trust you, I am going to praise you. And I'm going to honor you. I'm going to worship you. And I'm going to stay in joy. And I'm going to be grateful. He says, with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. That means gratitude. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So you can stay in a heart, in a state of gratitude. Be grateful. He said, but pastor, what am I going to be grateful? Be grateful that you are alive. Be grateful that you are able to wait. Be grateful that the answer is coming. Be grateful that God is smiling on you. Be grateful that his hand is still upon your life. There are many reasons to be grateful. It's a, it's a choice not to be grateful. It's a choice to be frustrated and be angry and be impatient. No, you can choose to be grateful. Be grateful. So, so you wake up in the morning and be grateful. You know... The Bible says concerning uh, Abraham in, in Romans chapter 4. Abraham in Romans chapter 4. Romans 4.19. Romans 4.19. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith, given glory to God. Now, there's something here. And, uh, okay, let me read 21. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. So, so this was the state of mind of Abraham while he waited. Bible says that, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. So his faith was strengthened. And how did he strengthen his faith? Given glory to God. So gratitude strengthened his faith. Gratitude strengthened his faith. So, so this is how you, you, you wait in patience. This is how you allow the joy and the peace of the Lord to guard your heart. When you include gratitude, you intentionally start giving thanks. Intentionally start thanking God by faith. Your faith starts becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. That's the right way to wait. You wait in peace. You wait in joy. You wait in gratitude. Those are the attitudes of heart that you adopt while you wait for the promise of God. You say, Pastor, ha -ha. How can I be thankful when the situation is still like that? No, you can be thankful. It's a choice. You can be thankful. 
You can be thankful in the midst of the pain. You can be thankful in the midst of the inconvenience. You can be thankful not for the pain, not for the inconvenience, for the faithfulness of God. Lord, I am thanking you because I know you've come through for me. I am thanking you because I know you have healed me. I am thanking you because I know you have turned the business around. I am thanking you because I know you've turned the marriage around. I'm enjoying the marriage. Yes, because you have come, come through for me. I praise you. I praise you because my marriage is beautiful. I praise you because the business is now blossoming. I praise you because my child is doing well at school. My child is, is delivered from the thing that wanted to kill him. You know, you begin to thank God in faith and praise him and genuinely, genuinely see yourself. The Bible said concerning Abraham, he said, being fully convinced, being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Being fully convinced. You see, so you got to be fully convinced that, that God will perform. And then you just keep thanking him. You just keep praising him. That's the right way to wait on God. Don't allow impatience. Impatience make you uh, uh, frustrated. You know, for some of us, Actually, what God is trying to deal with is our impatience. You know, I said it in the previous episode that God is more interested in what you are becoming than what he's bringing to you. In what you are becoming, you ought to become like Christ. So this process of what it is that you are trying to get from God, God is wanting to give you much more than that. He's trying to give you himself. And he himself is peace. The Bible says that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He himself is peace. So he's trying to give you peace. So why don't you open your heart and receive peace and, and be at peace? He said, be anxious for nothing. But by in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. So I am thanking you. I am praising you. I'm thanking you for doing it. I'm thanking you for my healing. I'm thanking you for the pain is gone. I'm praising you. And you do it long enough. Do it long enough until the joy actually starts flowing from your inside spend time every day to just be grateful do it long enough until joy is genuinely flowing it's not just that you are doing it by faith you are now fully convinced thanksgiving will strengthen your faith to full conviction let me say that again thanksgiving will strengthen your faith to full conviction what are you believing for what are you believing for thanksgiving just thank the lord be be grateful be grateful that's how to wait that's the right way to wait if you are if you are waiting in a place where you are you know overwhelmed and anxious and angry and angry at god and and complaining mm -mm, you have you have not you know you have not um, connected it listen we prove that we trust god when we refuse to worry we prove that we trust God when we refuse to worry. Yes, so, so you refuse to worry. Worry is trying to come in, you refuse. I shut you out. I'm not going to worry. Instead, I'm going to be grateful. We refuse. We, you're, you're, the proof that you have trusted God uh, well is that you are able to keep worry away. So when worry is coming, you say, no, 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 no. Hey, worry, no. I am not going to worry. I am going to be thankful. I'm going to be thankful that God has come through for me. I'm going to be thankful that the miracle has come through. I'm going to be, oh yes, and I'm, you are genuinely thankful. You are genuinely appreciative of what God is doing. Let me tell you something. God is at work in you to birth patience. Because part of, part of the character of Christ is patience. Look at what the Bible says in the book of James. James. Uh... Yeah, let, let, James chapter 1. Where is, where is the scripture? Verse 4, yes. James chapter 1, verse 4. It says, But let patience have its perfect work. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete. That's what God wants to do for you. That you may be, that he might bring you to perfection and by bring you to completion. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. So, so before what it is you are believing for comes, God wants you to come to a place inside where you are perfect and complete. Aye. 
This is what God is working in you. He said, let patience have its perfect work. So while you're exercising patience, while you are, you know, walking in gratitude, walking in joy, walking in peace, there's work that that patience is doing in you. is making you complete, perfect, and lacking nothing. Lacking nothing is that what you are believing for has come. But before it comes on the physical, on the outside, it has already come on the inside. Oh, did you get it? Before you get a child on the outside, it's already come on the inside. And that is what uh, uh, Romans talked about with, with Abraham said. He said he was fully convinced. He was fully convinced. So patience is working for you. Oh, patience is working a work for you. Because when, as patience is working, what you are believing for on the outside, you first of all get it on the inside. It's full conviction on the inside. Full conviction. So waiting for God is actually a good thing. Waiting on God is actually a good thing. Listen, listen. God, <laughs> God is so good that even waiting on him, waiting on him to do something is doing good for you. Ayah. Waiting on him to do something for you is doing good for you if you wait properly. You need, to, you need to get this thing that God cannot make you wait. And, and then, you know, it's a negative for you. No, the goodness of God is so overwhelming that waiting on God causes good things to happen for you. Why? The waiting process is producing good in you. Can you get it? The waiting process is producing good in you. If you wait properly. And how do you wait properly? Wait in thanksgiving. Wait trusting. Wait. Do not be anxious. Don't allow anxiety. Just wait the right way. The pastor, you don't understand. Time is going. Don't worry about that. I'm telling you now. Don't worry about it. You serve an absolutely good God. An absolutely powerful God. An absolutely mighty God. He's so mighty that the good he's done in you while you wait is far far better than what it is that you know if you had gotten what you're get, get, waiting for the second day after you started asking for it so if if the lord is allowing you to wait it's because he's wanting to do you good on the inside he wants you to be perfect inside he wants you to lack nothing inside and when you lack nothing and you're perfect inside you're complete inside then you will not lack the thing outside the blessing will come so the waiting season is working for you. The waiting period is working for you. And it's just how you are seeing it. But the devil wants you to be impatient. The devil wants you to be anxious. The devil wants you to be worrying. The devil wants you to be, you know, fretting. No, quit all of that. Throw, throw it back at the enemy. Throw, throw worry back at him. Throw anxiety back at him. I refuse to be anxious. I have trusted you. I rest in you. He said, but pastor, I am still being irritated. I'm still being resisted by the situation. This partner is still irritating me, still causing me pain. But do you know that you can, you can trust the Lord and put your trust in him that even the so-called irritation will no longer be so irritating? Oh, yes. Do you think that God does not know that what this person is doing is irritating, that what this person is doing is hurting? That's why trusting in him He's able to turn this situation around. He's able to make all things work together for your good. How he's going to do it, I don't know. All I know is that my God is an absolutely good God. He's infinitely good. He is, he is awesome. So if you can just trust him, his power is released. His anointing is released. His grace is released. His strength comes to play. My goodness, the forces of heaven descend in the situation and they are able to make all things work together for your good. So while patience is at work, some good things are happening inside of you. Some good things that when what you are waiting for has arrived, when what you're waiting for is in your hands, you are double blessed because there's been a deposit on the inside. Now you've got something on the outside. Which means that if that thing came on the first day, or the second day after you waited, you will only have something on the outside, but nothing on the inside. Now, because you waited, there's something beautiful that has happened on your inside. Your character has been shaped. Your character has been configured. Patience and peace has been installed on the inside. Now, the baby is on the outside. So, I've got two blessings. Now, I've got two blessings. I've got the blessing 
on the inside and I've got the blessing on the outside. Now the house is here. Now the job is here on the outside. But I've got something on the inside. This is what, how it works. Allow the Lord to do the good he wants to do on your inside and then give you on the outside. God is faithful. God is faithful. Bible says Abraham was fully convinced that he was able to perform what he had promised. He was able to perform what he has promised. And I'm saying to you, he's able to perform what he has promised. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm done for, for tonight. I hope you got it. I hope you got it. I want to pray for you. If you've been struggling, you know, um, to, to be patient, you've been struggling to be thankful, you've been struggling and you've been feeling so frustrated and you're fretting, this is your moment to repent. And just say, Lord, I am sorry. I'm sorry for fretting. I'm sorry for, for allowing the situation to get to me. I'm sorry for allowing my flesh to, to be stirred up and my flesh getting angry and getting impatient. And No, no, no. I'm sorry for that. Today, I receive grace to be at peace. I receive grace to walk in joy. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. That's what you, you know, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my hearer. I thank you for my brother, my sister, Tonight, who has received this word? Maybe they have fretted before now. Lord, I stand on, the, on, their, on their behalf and we ask for forgiveness. We ask for, 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 for forgiveness, for, for, for worrying, for fretting, for being impatient, for not allowing your peace to rest. For, Lord, I, I repent on their behalf. Even on my own behalf, if I have fretted regarding the things that you have promised and I have struggled to, to believe your word, I, I repent. I, I am sorry. And Lord, tonight we receive forgiveness and we receive help. Oh yes, we receive help. We receive strengthening. The Bible says that, that you strengthened Abraham in faith. We receive strengthening even as we switch into gratitude. As we begin to give glory to your name. As we begin to praise you. Praise you for the breakthrough. Praise you for the for the progress, praise you for the increase, praise you for the turnaround in the family situation. As we begin to praise you for it, we thank you that you've made us complete on the inside and made us, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, perfect, lacking nothing. Thank you, my Father, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I, I just hope I encouraged you. You may, you may also find this broadcast on, on our audio channels, on the on the internet podcast channels, Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, they are all there. Look for Living the Life with Pastor Chuck, Understanding the Goodness of God series. And this particular episode today is episode 211. And, and there's 210, 211. And then tomorrow we'll finish this thought around the right attitude to wait on the Lord. Thank you so much for hanging with me. Share this broadcast. Share the link to this. If you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, share it with somebody. Just copy the link and send it to somebody and let the blessing of God overflow in your life. Oh yes, while, you, while you're waiting, while you're waiting, God is working something inside of you, something beautiful. So good night. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye. There comes a time in your life when you need a change, an upgrade. You need upliftment. You need lasting results. You just want your life to be real. You need your life to be meaningful, deep, full, purposeful and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase, strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website .reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.